Hello, welcome back to Break the Twitch. My name is Anthony, and this is the second video in the three-part series I'm doing right now about healthy habits. Break the Twitch. I'm covering everything I learned in the last year about eating better and working out and establishing the habit of doing both. So this video is all about the working out and exercise side of everything I learned in the last year or so of doing this consistently. I'm going to start with general lessons that I've learned working out at a gym versus anywhere else. Then getting started at the gym if you're not sure what to do when you first go. My favorite exercises in the program that I follow now. And then one quick thing before we get started, I wanna make it very clear that everything I'm sharing is from anecdotal experience and my own research. I'm not a certified medical professional, personal trainer, physical therapist, or any of the above. Please consult your physician or other licensed medical professional before starting any food diet or exercise program. The first general thing I've learned is that working out does not always have to be about losing weight. There are a ton of different ways that you can have goals around exercise. Next up, I found that frequency works much better for me than intensity. Basically take the idea of working out for two and a half hours one day a week as opposed to working out for 30 minutes per day five days per week. You're going to have higher repetitions if you do 30 minutes five days a week, you'll burn more calories overall, and you'll be way better off with the higher frequency. In fact, one of my recent podcast guests, Thompson Adarin Comey, had something very similar to say as well. Say you rep 10 times and you stop, you don't even break a sweat, your heart rate doesn't get elevated. We do that every day. You, you, you got 70 reps in per week. You know, compare that to the guy that can only work out one day a week, upper body or lower body. He reps, you know, 20 or 30 or whatever. You have like 40 more reps on that guy. Okay, the third general principle that I learned is that immediate results don't matter at all. What matters most is establishing the habit of incorporating these healthy things into your life. So eating a little bit better each day and moving a little bit more each day. The body works in mysterious ways and sometimes when you start a new diet program or something, you might build some more muscle initially or your body might adjust in ways that you don't expect. Stick to the program and make it really more about showing up and making these long-term changes. One of the things that became very apparent for me in the last year was that working out is not just a physical benefit. It is a major mental clarity, mental health benefit as well. Anytime I'd be feeling down or frustrated, I would go and work out at the gym and I'd feel so much better. This is super consistent where my energy level goes back up after working out. It didn't happen right away where my body needed to adjust to that extra level of exercise and really get into the rhythm of it. But after a month or two, I noticed that my energy would increase after working out and give me more of that energy to make it through the rest of the day. And finally, for the general things, sleep. Sleep is one of those things that I've never really valued, but man, has it made a huge difference since I've started lifting more heavily and working out a little more aggressively. Sleep is just so essential and it needs to be prioritized whether you're working out or not. All right, let's move on to section two, working out at a gym versus working out anywhere else. I personally find that there's a lot of benefit to going to a gym. It helps me create some mental separation so that when I walk in the door of the gym, I know what I'm there to do. I know that I'm there to work out, and once I make it in the door, it's good to go. I'm ready to work out and ready to go. So for me personally, having a gym membership and actively using it is a big part of my own health process. But that absolutely does not mean that you need to go to a gym to add movement into your day. Diet is a major part of the health journey, but when it comes to building muscle, adding movement to your day, it can be done just about anywhere at any time. Just by adding those 
those little bits of movement into your day, you'll see compounding results over a long period of time. So give that a shot if you're not sure where to start. Just in case you do want to sign up at a gym for your very first time, here are some ideas of what you can do to start out. When you first walk into the gym, it's really important to remember that you don't need to know how to do everything right away. Keep it really, really simple when you're first starting out. It's like learning any new subject. You don't yet know what you don't know. Don't go too hard your first time and you'll be fine to come back to the gym the next day or two days later to go at it again. And that's what matters most. Start out by going over to the treadmill and just doing some moderate pace walking for five to 10 minutes, just three, three and a half miles per hour, and just keep a decent pace as you warm up. Once you're done with that, head over and do some air squats. You can do a set of five of them and do a couple of those sets, maybe three sets of five. Keep it really simple and light. But if you want, you can also grab a kettlebell or a dumbbell and hold it in a position like this. It's called a goblet squat. It'll just add a little bit of weight and give you something to balance yourself against. You might find it helpful depending on your strength level to add that to help keep you balanced. Next up, grab some really light dumbbells. They can be five or 10 pounds, but keep it light and do some overhead presses. This is just starting at your shoulder and pushing up over your head. You can easily do five sets of five with this or three sets of five, but just keep it light and easy and start getting your body used to going through those movements. Now use those same dumbbells to do some bicep curls. Again, go for three or five sets of five reps each. It's always better to start lighter and be able to do it really easily rather than get stuck under a huge amount of weight you're not ready to lift. And then finish up by just doing some light stretching. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just keep it light and easy just to wrap up your workout. And then you're done. You will have plenty of opportunity to scale up the weight as you get more experience with the different exercises. All right, and finally, here we are in the last section. And that is the strength building program that I've been doing for the last seven or eight months or so. This was pretty crazy for me because I had never done a weighted squat until I was 32 years old, just this last year, but it has totally changed my life. I've gotten so much stronger since I started doing this that it is incomprehensible to me. So what I recommend is a program called Strong Lifts. This is something that I've been doing and just really loving. And so I'm no longer just going to the gym to try to cut, to lose weight. Instead, I've been going to see progress in strength and muscle building, which is totally new for me and something I've really enjoyed. There is a ton of information at stronglifts.com that breaks down the exercises, why it matters, why it works, how to do proper form on all of the lifts and more. So I'm going to leave all of that to the professionals. But what I'll tell you now is that Strong Lifts is made up of five different core exercises. The squat, the deadlift, the overhead press, the bench press, and the barbell row. These five exercises are all considered compound lifts. That means that each one is working multiple muscle groups all at once. I've really enjoyed the program, and from when I started with a squat of about 100 pounds or so, I'm currently up to 275 for my five by five reps. That's a huge increase for me, and honestly one that was completely incomprehensible. This is not a paid endorsement. This is purely something that I was introduced to myself and found to be very effective, and I highly recommend to anyone that is even remotely interested. So that's why I wanted to share this information with you, and I would love to take any questions you have in the comment section of this video. I will answer them directly or put the answers in a future video as well. Next up, the third part of the series is going to be all about diet and everything I've learned about how my carb-sensitive body responds to the types of things I've been eating and the things that have helped me get stronger versus leaner. So we'll talk about it in the next one, but for now, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you soon.